Hey, sir, how are you? Doing terrific. Doing terrific. Good to have you tonight. Yes. <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome. We're going to give it just another minute. And we'll get started. We've got 100 folks and counting. If we could get on Facebook, we'd probably have 1,000 people on here. But uh, we, uh, we can't get on Facebook. But we're going to make sure that we edit this tomorrow and get it on Facebook uh, just through a, a preload, if you will. So uh, we, we've got 100 and counting. So it's good to have everybody tonight. We'll get started in just a minute. This is Amanda Hicks that I have with me tonight. I'll go on while we're waiting and flash up her before and after pictures again before we get started. Pretty amazing, Amanda. Is that hard to believe that's you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, because sometimes I still feel like that girl on the left. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's, uh, yeah, we've been talking about the term in a class I'm going to. That um, my, uh, everybody has to have a coach. So my coach says I have imposter syndrome, uh, which means that I, I still think that I'm someone from the past. That therefore I don't uh, step into uh, all the achievements of the day. And I think that's probably what you're referring to too. There, you still feel like that person in the before picture, but you've accomplished so much. You're not that person anymore. You're a changed person. She'd be so proud of me. <laughs> Yep, yep, absolutely. Okay, everybody, we're, we're going to get started. We'll go back and forth. I know we're going to have people coming and going. We're at 120 people now live. Good to have all of you. Uh, my name is Travis Martin. In case we have some new folks, this is Amanda Hicks that I have with me. I'm going to be interviewing her tonight uh, as we have started back with our evening time schedule as well. <laughs> we want to spend uh, each day doing our best to serve and then help people, help people do what we've done uh, and especially what Amanda's done. It's just, it's been one of the most, uh, we've had a lot of unique transformation, uh, but this one, this one is very unique, the story's unique, uh, and we are going to get into that shortly. Again, my name's Travis, I've lost over 100 pounds on the program. Amanda, you've lost how many pounds now? 120. 120 pounds, so between both of us here, 220 pounds lost. Uh, I've been in the sports nutrition, lifestyle change business, if you will, ministry. We like to say some ministry first and foremost for 20 years. God ordered my steps and, and I've been trying my best in my own weak way to fulfill that call for 20 years. And I come off all prescription medications and I'm honored to say that tens of thousands of other people have done what I've done. And we all uh, give, our, give our credit to the Lord without him changing our mindset. Uh, we couldn't be successful. The Bible says if if you live, you live unto the Lord. If you die, you die unto the Lord. He says live, you live. He says die, you die. And I am certain that the Lord that I serve changed my mind and my heart, and I'm certain that he did Amanda's too. And uh, we're going to get to talk about that in great detail tonight. Just a little housekeeping uh, before we get into this session with Amanda. If you're in the chat and you want to engage Make sure you chat, set your chat uh, to uh, everyone and not just all panelists, uh, because if you do it to all panelists, only I will see it, and uh, I, I may miss something. If, if you set it to everyone, then we all can see the chat and we can all engage with one another. Uh, also, I have a couple of my team members here tonight. It's good to have them. Could not serve this many people <clears throat> and get people the help we need. I'm sorry about the cough get the people the help that they need uh, without our great team members. So we're thankful that they're spending the evening with us too. There's Pinky Quick. She's probably stepping somewhere right now. She never stops stepping. She's another one. Very proud of her. Another 100 plus pound weight loss story. Do I have any other, before we get started, little, little praise and worship recognition. Do I have any uh, other 100 plus pound weight loss stories here tonight. This might be a pretty shocking. I've already seen Pinky pop up, Amanda, myself. Allison Edwards is at 96 pounds. We'll we'll call that 100. Charles Grant, over 100 pounds. Kim Day getting close. <coughs> uh, excuse me. All right, so that's, that's quite a few out of 137 people. So fantastic. And Pinky is getting her steps. Awesome. Well, it's good to have you all tonight. Deb Atkins, 160 pounds down. I think she's got everybody beat here tonight. <laughs> Great job. Fantastic job. All right. So let's get this started. Let's just start, Amanda, if you will. Just tell us a little bit about yourself. There may be some people that don't know you. And then after you tell them a little bit about yourself, and uh, I'd like to then 
uh, interject and talk about what really caused this interview to happen. And then we'll get into these great questions that the team has prepared and then some stuff that you want to talk to, talk about. We'll close tonight uh, letting these people ask some questions. So get ready for that. But please tell us, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you, uh, how we become acquainted, how you got started on this journey. <laughs> Oh, gosh. You know, it's so funny. It's so hard to, like, know where to start when it comes to that. Um, again, my name's Amanda. Um, I first found Shibboleth in 2014. Yes, my friend Katie introduced me to it. And um, at the time, I thought it was just another one of those weight loss programs that probably wasn't going to work. Um, and so I, I guess we'll get a little bit further into that, but, um, that's, I, I met Travis shortly after that. I think there was a Halloween party that we went yeah. to and that's that where I, the first time I met. Yeah. I think you had on ketchup and a ketchup or mustard outfit. I can't remember. Maybe a hot yeah. dog. It was Doritos and Benitos. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> Yeah, my, I, I had a t-shirt made that had the Benito's logo made on it. And then my husband, who was not on the plan, was wearing a, t a red t-shirt that said Doritos. So, I mean, if you know the whole lick the cheese dust off a of Dorito story, that's where that Halloween costume idea oh, came okay, from. Gotcha. So, um, yeah, I, I'm married. Uh, actually, tomorrow is our 15-year anniversary. So, um, excited about that. Um, I have, what's that? Congratulations. Oh, uh, thank you. Um, recently moved to the Florida Panhandle. That's part of, part of my story, part of the journey. Um, we, I grew up in the Atlanta area. I was in the military. I was in the Navy. That's where I met my husband. And, um, yeah, after it, it was really after I got out of the military that I started really having weight issues, um, just, you know, just lifestyle, you know, while I was in the military, I had to be active. Um, after I got out of the military, started college, uh, I was a poor college student, you know, trying to make ends meet, eating cheap, quick, fast food, and the, the weight just kind of crept on. And, um, so yeah, I, I, there's, I, I don't know what direction to go, sir. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I think you're muted. I keep coughing on y'all. No, that was a great introduction and just to, you know, let them get to know you a little bit. And we got some great questions for you. And uh, I, I think that's going to really pull out some beautiful stuff. I want to tell the group how this guy, how, how this interview happened. So I was doing that thing that I do where I'm trying to recognize one of our members. Uh, Facebook algorithms are, are quite weird. Uh, sometimes I can post a transformation picture and it'll get 15 or 20 of our members to like it, want to know more or to say they're inspired. But sometimes the algorithms play out just right. You just never know what their algorithms are or what you've said that's a key word in the post that triggers that algorithm opening up and, and you get in front of people that are not necessarily members. So we posted this uh, transformation that I keep popping up here. We posted this with some words and immediately uh, it began to get traction <clears throat> with uh, hundreds of people liking or disliking or commenting on the post. And many uh, of, of the comment, uh, not the majority, because our clients came like they do. Our members are the best and they come to our rescue because to be fair to the naysayers, uh, most of the stuff you see out there like this, I'm in the industry, I know, is Photoshop, it's fake, it's not real. But this transformation is real, and we all knew it was real because we've been with you uh, during your journey. But the comments were that this was fake, this wasn't real, that's not the same person, that we were hoodwinking people, et cetera. And uh, we just had so many of our beautiful members come and, and say, no, I know Amanda, this is a real transformation. And one of the things was, well, she had to have surgery. Uh, she had to have the, the loose skin removed, which you have not. But my point and many other people's point, so what, even if you had, but you had yep. because you've done things the right way. Uh, and that's what prompted this interview. We've had so many people reach out and want to hear your story because it got noticed that day. Uh, and it's just an amazing story. And tonight, 
we're going to talk about uh, what got you started, what was the trauma in your life that propelled you to, to want a better life for yourself, for your family, for your future. We're going to talk about all that stuff. You told us a little bit about how we met, but there was something that in your life, certainly, it's the same for all of us, that gets us off the couch and gets us started moving toward our highest and best self. For me, I had a level of disgust with my uh, my health uh, and with my self-esteem and self-confidence. So what was it that got you up and moving, that got you started? Because the transformation, you didn't lose 30 pounds just eating right foods. You, I mean, you went crazy. You started eating right. You, you've, you, we're going to get into the exercises that you did. You do all kind of different exercise activities. I mean, you're whole. You're not the same person. So yeah. what was that pain that got you up and got you moving in the right direction with your life? Well, so to start with, when I first sh- found Shibboleth in 2014, prior to that, um, that, that picture on the left, or yeah, the picture on the left, the, the before picture, that picture was from 2011. I was in, we were on our graduation cruise. I graduated from grad school in December of 2010. My husband graduated from, with his bachelor's degree in May of 2011. And that was our celebration cruise. And I was over 300 pounds in that picture. And um, it was after we graduated, we were at a point where we were ready to start a family. We had been married for a few years. We were simply waiting for him to get out of school. And um, at that point, we were ready to have a family. And um, so it took us, you know, we, we waited about six months or so, ended up not getting pregnant, ended up going to the doctor in November of 2011. And um, that was when I got the, the devastating doctor news that, you know, you suffer from PCOS, you're insulin resistant, you've got to lose weight. You, you're not going to be able to get pregnant if you don't get this under control. Um, and so that, I, and the doctor at the time, the only advice he gave me was you need to quit, quit eating anything white, white bread, white rice, white potatoes, and you need to go on a 1200 calorie a day diet. And you, where I was at that point in my life, um, I didn't know how how to even make that work. I mean, I was drinking sodas. Gosh, if you drink a Mountain Dew, that's 200 calories right yeah. there. Right. And, um, and so it, it, it really was th- like the, the beginning catalyst was not being able to get pregnant. Um, we, we were married, we, we wanted to start a family and found out that physically we weren't able to. And is that mostly uh, from, a, from a health standpoint, the reason you couldn't get pregnant when one is overweight significantly, the hormone, hormonally, it's hard to conceive. Yes, yes. Um, and, and, you know, there, there may have been more to it. Um, I, you know, in the years 2011 through 2014, before I found Shibboleth, we tried several different things. We tried, you know, in vi- not in vitro, but, uh, there were hormone pills to, to try to make things work. And it, it just, it, it wasn't working for us. Um, you know, not, not to get into too much details, but some of those pills make it where you don't even want to do what you got to do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. It, yeah. Yeah. You're right. So that, so really the, the big catalyst for you was you wanted, you wanted to clean up the health so that you could get pregnant because the thought of not conceiving not having a child to love, to care for, uh, that was just devastating to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, that, was, that was the, and it really, my story really evolves because, I mean, that was just like the, the nugget. And then there, there's, it just, it, it built, um, you know, so when I did find Shibboleth, I'm like, okay, well, you know, I've, tr- I've tried all these other weight loss programs. I'd tried Wheat Belly. I had tried Atkins. I had tried, I can't even remember. <laughs> There's so many of them. And, um, but then when Katie introduced me to this, I'm like, well, it's another program. Might as well try it, see what happens. And, and 
what I found that that first year when I joined is, is that it made it simple. The program, you know, and, and I've shared this before for, for those of you who have been around for a while, the thing that I love about Shibboleth is that it teaches you how to measure moderation. You know, we, we always hear everything is fine in moderation. I didn't know how to do that. I didn't know what moderation meant. You know, does moderation mean I can have one soda a day or does it mean I can have one soda a week? <laughs> you know, that's, that's a good point. Yeah, that's a good point because, yeah, I talk to people all the time that say, yeah, I'm going to cut back to a couple of sodas and, you know, instead of six a day. And they think that's going to get the job done when they're still spiking their insulin through the roof, which probably when we get into the exercise component, you probably learn by being a physique competitor if you don't. You're not going. To, you're not going to cut much much fat if you're spiking insulin levels. So, so you got started, and uh, your your eating the eating part of your journey began. Mm-hmm. And in the, I tell people all the time, my first six weeks, I was so serious. I lost forty four pounds in my first six weeks. Uh, about how much did you lose in your first month or two? Well, let's. I, I think we probably. Sh- should fast forward to when I came back to the program um, I, um, because 2018. So, uh, and you know, we can get into more details as we need to, but the long story short, I, I found the program 2014. I had some success 2014, 2015. I lost my way due to life stuff that we will definitely get into. Um, but in 2018, when I found my way back, January of 2018, that first month I lost 26 pounds. So let me take back though. So you started and you had some sort of minor relapse. Yes. Okay. And what you said, there was some trauma that caused that. What was going on that caused that? So I, so I lost 70 pounds in about nine months from the fall of 2014 through the summer of 2015. Fall of 2015, um, we were still on the journey to be parents but we were no longer trying to conceive. We were, we had started the adoption process. Okay. Um, and, you know, there, there were a lot of factors that went into how we ended up getting to that point. But we started taking foster and adoption licensing classes in the fall of 2015. And that was when, that was the start of my downfall because um, there was so much paperwork there was a lot of the classes were they were like three hours, um, they were three hours, one night a week. And um, it, while I was doing good on Shibboleth and following the rules and doing the plan and everything, it um, it really it derailed me uh, because there was so, so much back and forth that we had to do in order to be prepared in order to pursue this adoption process. Um, we were trying to adopt a teenager not a young child, not a baby. And so there were a lot more hoops that we had to jump through as far as, you know, getting everything there. So basically 2015 into 2016 into early 2017, I completely fell off the program. Uh, it, the, the just life got in the way. I stopped taking care of me because I was trying to get this child into my home. And so I was no longer the focus. He was the focus. And I I gained every bit of it back during that time. Yeah. And so for those of you listening who had a relapse, I hope you end up being inspired tonight because relapse for all of us is usually part of recovery. And why am I using the term recovery? This is an addiction problem. For example, um, I'm sure with some reflection, Amanda would feel and tell you that um, even though she didn't take time out for herself, that it didn't help anything. It didn't help anything. It probably hindered. It probably caused more stress not eating right, not taking care of herself. So you started and what I'm hearing, you hadn't really made it the first go around. You hadn't made it a lifestyle. No, no. I I learned. Uh, in fact, I remember 2014, 2015, I was following all the like the wow challenges. And I was I, I, I made myself sick on quest bars. I love me a good quest bar, but they were my go to. And they were very good and portion controlled. And and so I, I lost a lot of weight, but I didn't learn the program. Got 
guy. And so I didn't, I didn't know how to, I, I didn't know the food combinations well enough in order to be able to sustain it. So how much of that 70? So this was going on. How did how did things end up with the with the, the child? So by the summer of 2017, he, I mean, it was a it was a full year that we were fighting to get him into our home, and so he finally came to us in this in July of 2017. So- this is the thing. I mean, this is the major focus of your life at the time. Not not trying to lose weight. Correct. You're focused on this dream that you've always had. Yeah. Of, of having a child. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So he he came to our home in July of 2017. He turned 16 in August. So that was cool. You know, he he came with us. We you know were able to have his birthday party and everything. Um, and he was with us through the fall. Um, things were great. Uh, it was the, it was a wonderful, wonderful experience. Um, but he had been in the foster system for so long that he had a lot of trouble adapting. He had, he, he struggled to be in a home environment because a group home with lots of other kids with group home, like rotating group home parents, not people who were there all the time is different people taking shifts is a completely different environment than living in a home with parents who care about you. And um, so he was with us for five months and it was 12 days before Christmas that we had, we ended up having a big falling out. He didn't like being held accountable. He, I mean, he was 16 years old. He, I mean, he, he, he had had his own trauma and while we would not have changed anything about the way we parented him, um, it, he he had enough of a say so that he said, you know what, this is not a, a fit for me. I, I want to go back to the group home. And so we respected his wishes. And again, that was 12 days before Christmas in 2017. And so that was that was when fit hit the shan for me. <laughs> And I hit absolute rock bottom. So you may not want to dwell on that, and that, that's okay. But so th- you're you're at this place where you're you're excite, excited. You're excited about the future. Maybe even thinking once we get the get the home in order, yeah. uh, we we build this relationship. Uh, we care for this person. Then I'm gonna start taking control of my life again. It's all gonna work out. It's gonna be fine. And then the rug gets pulled out from under you. Pretty much, yeah. We we had these big like we like our our plan at the time when we, when we realized that we were not able to conceive, but we also knew that we had a heart for teenagers because we I mean we volunteered with the church with the youth group at the church. We knew that teenagers was where our hearts were, and so we had this big dream that we were going to be foster parents for forever. We were going to take in the unwanted teenagers that nobody wanted, the the ones that needed the love and guidance, teach them how to drive, teach them how to apply for, uh, you know, college scholarships, the the things that you will not learn in a group home that, I mean, and so we, that, that was our dream. Like when, when, when we realized that we were not going to be able to conceive and be biological parents, we thought that our path was, well, we will just take care of these kids and teach them how to be good members of the community kind of thing. And so, yes, the, the rug was pulled out from underneath us. And, um, it was, it was traumatizing enough that I I knew that I couldn't go through that again. And, and we, we got a lot, I feel like I got a lot of flack from it because we wanted it for so long. And then I had one, a lot of people looked at it as, oh, you had one bad experience and you gave up. No, there, there's a lot more to it than, than that. You know, if, if you haven't been in those, if you haven't walked a mile in those shoes, it, it's, it's hard to want to do it again. Sure, sure. So this happens. And now, again, I'm imagining, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but um, you've got this huge void. Mm-hmm. And you, you said you hit rock bottom. What did what did rock bottom look? Like? Well, so I remembered that I had I had started with Shibboleth. I had started to have some success. I knew and I knew you know I said just a few minutes ago that I didn't know the program enough 
to be successful with it. I, I knew it enough that I knew that it worked if I would just put in the work. And I think that that was, that was where I had failed before. And so, you know, the, the, the rest of the month of December into New Year's. So, so my husband and I actually ended up, we, we took some time off right at New Year's just to regroup, you know, to, to figure out what the heck just happened. We, we have overturned our lives for the last two years to try to make this happen. And now he's gone. Where, where do we go from here? And um, for me, um, I ended up turning back to the Shaboleth website. I needed some good old Travis preaching. I went, I, I, I'm, I'm serious, sir. I logged in and I found the, and I don't even know if these still exist, but they were these videos called the Daily Doses. And I, for, for three days, for three days, I sat in my hotel room because we, we had come to the beach and it was raining. And I'm like, well, there's nothing to do. Let's so sit inside and watch TV. That's like, usually when people listen to me. There's got to be absolutely <laughs> nothing else to do. <laughs> <laughs> and so I pulled up the daily doses and I just refreshed my memory on what Shibboleth was about. And I told my husband then, I said, I have, I had enough success that I know that this program works. I stopped doing this program because I was focusing on him. I said, I'm done focusing on other people. And, and, and it was then that I resolved to myself, I'm like, I'm going to be completely selfish. And I don't care who I make mad in the process. I'm going to be completely selfish. I'm going to take care of me, myself, and I. And um, I'm, I'm going to get back on this. I'm going to learn how to eat appropriately because I'm tired of being fat. I'm tired of being miserable. And whoa, 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 whoa. you can't say that word fat. I mean, uh... P-H-A-T, you can't say that. I'm just kidding. We're not on Facebook, but I just had, to, I could not help but interject. Cannot say that word anymore. We're going to get into that too, believe okay. me. But uh, no, no, no. I, we're going to get tired of being fluffy. <laughs> fluffy. That Maybe that'll work with Facebook. But no, you're just telling it like it is. You're, that's how you felt. Yeah. You being your own accuser, you're yeah. saying, nobody else said it. You're saying it. I'm tired of being fat. It's over. I've yeah. drawn my line in the sand and I'm yeah. fit. That's all. Awesome. Yeah. Didn't mean to interrupt. You keep going if you. Sorry. I, I, I knew as soon as I said it, I'm like, that's going to mess up his algorithms. Crap. Oh, I, I was joking. <laughs> Don't worry about it. We didn't give you a list of words not to say because I can't keep up with all the ones I'm not supposed to say. <laughs> But so, yeah, it was, it, it, it was that, that weekend that I just, I, I, like you said, had to draw the line in the sand and I, I really, I had nowhere else to go, nowhere else to go, but up. And so. All right. So now you started back. Now you, when you started back, you've learned, you're learning the program. You're beginning to eat right. You're beginning to lose some of the weight that you had gained back. You're getting a little momentum. Yeah. Did did that all start? Did you start back immediately with Shibboleth and exercise, or was there a little bit of a, a, a distance between when you started back and when you started exercising and pole dancing and those types? Um, it was pretty much an all 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 at once kind of thing. Um, I I did it all in. Yeah, I mean, now I've added stuff along the way, but in January in January of 2018, I started eating right. I made sure I was walking, and I recommitted to going to pole classes because I I had started taking pole classes in 2015. So right at the end, right right as things were starting to fall apart. I was beginning pole classes, but it was, it was, you know, just here and there. And so when I made the decision that I was going to get my life back on track, I wasn't just going to do, do it piddly here and there. I was going all in. So to me at that time, all in meant I need to eat right. I need to make sure I'm walking and I'm going to go to class at least twice a week. Awesome. So, so you said, these are the things I'm going to implement mm -hmm. and I'm going to do it on the days that I want to do it. And I'm going to do it on the days I don't want to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So your, your primary in the beginning, you're eating right because you can't out exercise a bad diet. Nope. Then you include for toning and strength training. It's, by, by the way, let me interject. What I want y'all all to see here is 
because she did things the right way. That's why we got so many of them nasty comments that said these are fake pics, that there's no way she hasn't, these aren't doctored or she hasn't had aesthetic surgery or whatnot to fix loose skin issues, which she has some. She has some. She she's talked about that openly, but she did things the right way. That that's the that's the reason you see this woman who we don't know who he is anymore. The three hundred pound version, still beautiful, still amazing, but you wanted more. And this is why when we look at your transformation, we see dense muscle. You preserve muscle. Later, you would go on to build muscle. But this started in increment. In yep. that you operated in a calorie deficit and you started expending extra energy through walking. I remember you were walking a ton. Yep. And you started strength training through something exciting to you rather than going to the gym back then. Yeah. Just doing some boring routine. You started pole dancing, right? Yep. In fact, I only joined a gym literally a month ago. I like, I ever, like, I didn't like gyms. I didn't want to be in there. Didn't want to be a gym rat. I, I enjoyed pole. I enjoyed walking. Um, it, and it took me being, in, I mean, you know, during COVID, and again, we'll probably get more into this, but I started building my home gym. I, you know, I started getting bar, you know, dumbbells and resistance bands and things like that. And it was, it was enough for me at the time. And so, yeah, you don't have to join a gym. I, in fact, I, you know, I've been doing this for four years now, four and a half years now, and I just joined a gym literally a month ago. <laughs> Uh, that's, that's pretty amazing. You did a lot of what I did. I built my own home gym, so I had no excuse. Yeah. Um, awesome. Awesome. So the pole dancing. Now we're going to get into one of the a few subjects uh, that uh, inquiring minds want to know or comment on. So over the last few years, uh, as you and I have been in class together, uh, been in uh, the elite group together, been in some of the groups together. You and I, behind the scenes, have always had a lot of fun with the Jack character, right? Yeah. You, you, and what we're really doing, we're not even talking to anyone else. What we're saying is we found our inner Jack that says, I'm fat, I'm sick of it, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired, I'm not taking it anymore, I'm not making excuses anymore, I'm over it. Yep. And when you reach that level, of non-excuse making anymore. You get in a place where you can't stand to hear other people make excuses because you're almost afraid you will catch the plague again. So I, there's, there's, I'll, I'll get to get to this. So one of the things is we've been in class, you will, and y'all put the kids to bed for a minute. Okay. Put the kids to bed. And let me just preface this with, this is kind of where this is going. So Amanda can be thinking how she's going to answer this. Several people have asked me why Amanda quit Shibola. And I tell them she did not quit Shibola. She still utilizes those beginning principles of nutrition, but she's moved on to exercising and, and, and doing some other things and surrounding herself with people who are more into what she's into. And he was like, oh, okay. So she didn't quit Shibola. So no, she's just not involved in the groups anymore because what would happen somebody would say for example um they'd make an excuse and you get on to them about making that excuse and they would get their feelings hurt and then i would have to run in and wink wink at you and say i look i get it i understand but we're gonna have to delete that it's caused too many hurt feelings but now don't you get hurt at Samantha? and you're like oh it's good i understand but I'm going to tell it like it is. And it got to be so persistent with people complaining. And one of the things was the pole dance, which I support. Uh, I support uh, a woman uh, who says, you know what? I'm going to find some activity. Uh, I'm, I'm a born again Christian. I'm going to find some activity that inspires me to get busy and, and to move and get strong. And we would hear comments like, well, as a Christian organization, you shouldn't have photos out there of, of one of our members on a poll. I disagree. Now, now, what what caused you to, we're all adults here, what caused you to choose that avenue? And and I don't know if, if it's part, I, I don't know because I'm not a woman. I know how I felt with low self-esteem and low self-confidence. I'd go to the beach and I wouldn't take my shirt off things like that. Now I look for reasons to stay my shirt off. So yeah, I like my wife to be proud of me. So did any of that factor in you feeling more sexy, more alive? 
What was going on that you chose pole over, say, CrossFit? Um, it, 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 it was a self-confidence thing. It, it, it really boiled down to self-confidence. I remember, way, like, in my early 20s, I went to a bachelorette party. And this bachelorette party was a pole party. And I was at my biggest. I was, you know, 300 pounds or so. And I remember being so mortified. Like I went because it was my friend's bachelorette party, but I was miserable. And I swore I would never do that again. I swore I would never do it again. (laughs) Well, fast forward 10 years and I meet a friend who is doing it. And she's like, this is a great workout. You know, she was not... I don't know if I'm allowed to say she was not a sex worker. She was just literally doing it for fitness. Yeah. yeah. And she was, she was telling me, Amanda, I have so much fun with this. It has given me confidence in how I carry myself, my person. She's like, you should come with me to class. And I'm like, I've done that once before. And it was miserable. She's like, just, she's like, just come and go with me. So I did. And I got bit by the bug. Cause I'm real good at that. I go try something once and I get back bit by the bug. That's probably why I haven't done jujitsu yet, sir, because I'm afraid that I, I ain't got time to do it. <laughs> You'll get addicted if you ever do it. So well, I know you. I know your personality. And the first time that you choke somebody unconscious, you're going to be addicted. <laughs> <laughs> but to to fully answer your question, it, the first few times, like I remember going to the first few classes and I did not have the upper body strength to even pull myself up. Um, I could not climb. Like I could how, barely. How did, even... that, how did that feel? Because now I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but there's some good stuff. <laughs> out. So Sasha and I have, have watched for years and I think even more than your your eating transformation, if I can put it that way, we've been we've been even more amazed at your beginning poll videos from back then yeah. until now and the strength that you've built. Yeah. So go back then, what was was that part of the level of just oh disgust or yes. I'm going to fix this because I now see where I'm at physically with my strength or whatnot. So how did that feel not to be able to even carry your own body weight back then and then carry us through that process of that first time you started hitting moves on the pole? And yeah. There's, there's no way I could do strength-wise. What was that like? Well, it's like the phrase that you said, the truth will set you free, but first it'll piss you off. Well, the truth was I couldn't hold myself up and it pissed me the heck off. (laughs) And so it, it, it really, and, you know, going to classes several times a week and seeing the improvement, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm still not there yet. But I've made improvement. I, you know, I remember the first time I was able to climb like two foot, uh, two foot on the pole. I'm like, I could not do that two weeks ago. And I climbed today. Hallelujah. And so it was celebrating the small victories. And um, it is the same thing with with food. You know, there were there were times where, you know, it it was a a mental thing. Like, I don't need that bag of M&Ms. I really want that bag of M&Ms, but I don't need it. And so when I finally conditioned myself to a point where I'm like, I am mentally strong enough that I do not need that bag of M&Ms. So it it was it was kind of one of those things where I went to class. I was just trying to, I just wanted to see what I was capable of. I didn't know, I I did not know what I was capable of. And so I just kept pushing myself until just to see what can I do next? What's next? Yeah. And, you know, you were worried about getting yourself in trouble tonight. I'll probably be the one to end up getting in trouble because I'm very interested. We, we've we talked a lot through the years, but it's usually, uh, you know, about weight loss or, or wellness or something like that. But, you know, I, I've picked up on things through the years that uh, kind of resonate with me. And if, if you don't want to talk about some of this stuff I bring up, please, please, it's okay. I'm just going to interview you. I'm going to be Joe Rogan. You're going to be my guest. Yes, <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to try to <laughs> draw it out. But, uh, you know, pole dance, put the kids to bed. Let, let me preface it with this. How, how do I say this? Sasha and I, as husband and wife, now I'm going to get in trouble for this. As husband and wife, we went through an exercise in the home. And uh, don't please, 
Please put the kids to bed. This exercise at home was called Naked Spaghetti Night. <laughs> yes. Naked Spaghetti Night. And uh, we decided that we would eat some approved spaghetti sitting there at the table, just us, of course, but naked. And what we found, and we'd had a little relapse going. And this was my idea, by the way. Of course. So we sat there and what I found is my portion control was very strict. There was just something about sitting there without all those clothes on, seeing how I really look and sitting there eating in front of a person that I love and adore and want to find me attractive and sexy that caused me to tighten up on my portion. Now, I'm just curious. That pole dancing, I would imagine, because you're in a vulnerable situation. I mean, you're, you're wearing basically what is a teeny, teeny bikini. Mm -hmm. And you're sitting there having, if it's like anything I've ever encountered with fitness, I'm, you're sitting there having to look at your own flesh, your yep. own body. I would imagine between pole class to pole class, there was a lot more pressure to watch those portions. During it, the yeah, it really was um, because, you know, there, there's there's memes about beginning pole, pole dancers versus those who've been doing it for a few years where the, the beginners come in and they're wearing all kinds of clothes, you know, and then once you've been doing it for a little bit, you've, you've developed a little bit more confidence. You're like, okay, I'm going to show a little bit more skin. I know I need more skin because I need skin to stick to the pole, but I'm still not confident enough to be quite as skimpy as I need to be. You know, um, one of the things like people will wear a tank top just like this and but you need that side grip. And so you'll be in class learning a new move. And it's like your shirt is getting in the way, darling. You're going to have to move that. So then people will tuck it up in under their bra strap so that that way they have the skin available so that the skin will stick to the pole. And it takes that kind of vulnerability like, oh, my gosh, now you can see my fluffy love handles. I, you know, and it, it, I mean, it was very eye-opening. It was, it was one of those things where I'm like, I don't want those fluffy love handles there. How do I get rid of the fluffy love handles? So not only do I feel good doing this, I look good doing it too. Yeah. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. Over the years, how long have you been doing pole now? Now you're even doing, it looks like you're competing in pole too. I, not... I've only done one official pole competition and that was in 2019. I wanted to do more in 2020. Pole world shut down. That's how I ended up finding bodybuilding. This year, this summer, I went to my first pole convention, which I mean, it's just a convention. So the, the performance that I did was strictly just a performance. It wasn't, I wasn't competing against anybody. I was just basically saying, Hey, this is what I'm capable of. I do want to compete some more. I just, haven't found the right opportunity to do yet. Yeah, it, it's so inspiring. I mean, my wife is so inspired by, it, you know, what you're doing and what you're accomplishing, the strength increases, the strength gains you've made before we even get into the bodybuilding part. The, the pole part has just amazed her at how much strength you built. Now, how long have you been doing pole? Uh, I technically started it seven years ago. It was, it was 2015, it was August of 2015. But the first two and a half years... I wasn't really consistent with it. It was Jan It was January 2018. January 2018 is my new birthday. That's when I recommitted to Shibboleth and I said, I'm going back to classes. Um, it was, I, I restarted with beginner pole classes in January of 2018 and because I wanted to relearn the foundations and, and make sure that I had the strength I needed to move up to the level two and level three classes and things like that. So, um, so technically I've been doing it for seven years, but I only count the last like four and a half years. And now during this time that you're, you're eating right, you're losing body fat, you're doing the pole dance classes, um, you're building up strength over that time. Cause I just want everybody to get the, the, that you may never do pole dancing, folks, but the mindset that you need to adopt to engage in selfish self-care, which in the long run is not selfish. What's really selfish is not to take care of your darn self. Yeah. But you didn't just go do that and everybody supports you. Now, I, I, if I'm speaking for you, stop me if I'm wrong. But back then when you started the Shibboleth group, the Shibboleth support and the accountability was very important to you but you did go through a lot of judgment 
mm-hmm. by our wonderful and amazing that come to your rescue too. They do me even when they're mad at me. You encountered a lot of judges. Yeah. And yeah. that was one of the catalysts whereby you removed yourself from the group because not only are you trying to do this stuff, you, you're you setting yourself free. Yeah. You should be celebrated for setting yourself free, but you're encountering various types of judge. How did that feel? How, what gave you the wherewithal to continue on, even though your support system that had been was kind of breaking down a little? Yeah, it, it was one of those things where, and I don't, I, I, honestly, sir, I don't, I don't know where my mental mindset came from other than I, just stubbornness. Like I, I, my mom says, I've just always been stubborn. And when I get my, get my mindset on something, I'm going to do it. And I think that, you know, when I did get back on the program, um, I remembered, you know, because of the relapse, I'm like, you have already failed at this once before. You ain't going to fail again. I, I like I, that. And that was the sheer determination of it that I was like, I am not going to be a failure again. And with Paul um, being part of it, you know, I, it, it just made me happy. It, it, gave me something to look forward to. So, you know, while I was having to train myself to not have all the yummy treats that had caused me to be PHAT for a long time, I, you know, was looking for other ways to enjoy myself that didn't involve sticking something down my mouth. And so I needed pole and, uh, you know, and I didn't feel like I needed anybody's approval to do it. You know, my husband, he has been the, my biggest cheerleader all along. Now, when I first started, he was just like, are you sure about this? <laughs> and I'm like, yes, honey, I'm, I'm really sure about it. I'm like, it, 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 there, there's something in it for you. <laughs> and that's all the convincing he needed. <laughs> that's all. That's all. So you are going through this, you're doing it uh, with, you're doing it even in the face of some opposition, but have good support from your husband. You're feeling sexier, feeling more alive. You're making progress. And then at some point you decide you want to be a physique competitor. Tell us when that started and what that's all about. Oh, that's COVID's fault. That's all COVID's fault. (laughs) Because as I mentioned, I, um, I did my first pole competition in 2019. Um, it was a level, it was a very level one basic beginner piece, but it was a chance for me to get on stage and um, share what I had learned. And I, like, I had this big stage fright fear. I was scared to death to do this tonight. You know, I was talking to your staff members and everything. I'm like, I'm going to ramble and sound like an idiot. But stage fright has been one of the things, one of my transformation things that I have wanted to work towards. And so when I did my first pole competition in 2019, I, I, there were six people in my division. I placed fifth out of six. So I wasn't the best. I wasn't the worst, but I wasn't the best. I had fun with it. And I'm like, you know what? I want to keep working towards this. And so I had plans. I had three competitions planned in 2020 that I was going to do. I I had, you know, characters picked out. I had songs picked out. I was working on choreography. And then COVID happened and the whole world shut down. And I'm like, I've got to have something. And, and, you know, and and you all know how, how the world was. I mean, there were even like even races, you know, at that point I was racing. I was doing 5Ks, 10Ks, half marathons. Even those were shut down because you couldn't breathe around one another. And I had like, I had developed so much momentum. I'm like, I cannot let this stupid virus stop my momentum. I I, I simply could not. I, I, I refused to let it. I'm like, I've got to have something to work towards. And so um, the way I ended up finding bodybuilding is, is I was on Instagram and I, I was following some, some pole people and there was an overlap. Like I kept seeing bodybuilders show up in my, in my newsfeed. And I'm like, what's going on with these bodybuilders? You know, what are they doing? And just, I just started researching. I'm, I'm a researcher by nature that it, I'm just curious And I found this federation that was doing a transformation 
uh, competition. And so I'm like, transformation, what is that? What's that all about? And I read into it and it could be about any kind of transformation, a mental transformation, a physical transformation, anything like that. And um, the what actually forced me to make a decision to do it was that there was a three-year time limit. So I had started, I had restarted Shibboleth in January of 2018 Three years would have been January of 2021. Well, I was looking at this in August of 2020. And this, this particular show was going to be in November. And so I'm like, I am about to like not be within this three-year window to share my transformation story. If, if I'm going to do this, I need to go ahead and pull the trigger and commit. And so that's what I did. Is as I found, I, I saw that this was being offered and I'm like, I'm going to go to this bodybuilding show. I'm going to enter this transformation division. I'm going to be like, hey, everybody, here's my weight loss story. And I thought that was going to be the end of it. No, it was just another, you know, bite me in the butt, make me want to do bodybuilding kind of thing. Bit, bit by the bug. So now, so now you're, you're in the bodybuilding and you, you've gotten your uh, International Bodybuilding Federation Pro Card, right? No, 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 no. Oh, I'm, no, I'm, I'm, no, I'm still working towards that. And see, that's that's part of the thing. It's like when I first started doing it, I'm like, I just want to document my journey. I want other people, you know, the whole weight loss surgery versus skin removal surgery, things like that. I, I will say I've had a very hard time finding other people who have done bodybuilding, who have gotten on stage, who... Um, did not have some sort of surgery. And so for me, the way a, a lot of my story and the reason I document and why I'm such an open book is because I want other people to see, hey, it is possible. You can get on stage. You don't have to wait until your body is 100% absolutely perfect. You, you can do this. And so um, I, when I first started, I never had any desire to get my pro card. I'm like, I'm just doing this to have fun. And, um, it was this past, this past competition. Um, I, I've done this. Same, so there's this one here in Panama city called the fire and ice classic. I did it in 2021. I did it this year in 2022. And, um, the, the judges were very, you know, they, they were very encouraging. They said, you've made great progress in the last year. Keep going. We want to see, we want to see how far you can go. And that just inspired me that I'm like, okay, well, maybe I do want my pro card one day. And so now I, so no, I'm still an amateur. I'm not where I need to be yet, but I'm, I'm chasing that pro card. I want, I want it. It, it, it may take me 10 years to get there, but I'm going to work for it. Well, tell us, Amanda, and you all, if you will, please, please, please begin to post any questions that you have for Amanda. And uh, Tammy and I will try to keep up with the questions versus just the comment. If you have specific, because we're not going to keep her all night. So if, if you have specific questions for her, uh, please start asking, and then I will relay those questions to her. But Amanda, could you take us through a couple of days? Because uh, because you, I would say this: uh, you may not be a pro bodybuilder yet, you may not have your pro card, but you're a professional lifestyle. You're not an amateur. Amateurs do things right some of the time. Professionals do it right almost all the time, which you do. So share with us what two or three days in your week look like from what you will eat. Do you prep your meals? Uh, what What does your exercise regimen look like on a Monday and a Tuesday? What does a, a couple of days in the life of Amanda look like as it relates to the, the, the four pillars of wellness? And one of those being nutrition and the other being exercise, the other two being supplementation and faith. But nutrition and exercise what does a few days of your life look like and and sally wants to know do you journal now so you can uh add on add that in too i do journal i use my fitness pal because um at this particular point in my journey i am tracking macros so um while i do still use the foundations of the shibboleth combinations um, I, you know, not every meal that I eat is a Shibboleth approved meal anymore. And that's simply because of the way my, my nutrition needs to go with me being a bodybuilder and with my muscle gains 
goals, I, I've had to adjust it a little bit. So yes, I do. I do track. I do journal. Um, I do it a little bit differently than what Shibboleth um, requires. Um, you, say you track your macros so that everybody understands. When you're trying to put on muscle, you have to have enough protein. You have to have enough carbohydrate to fuel your workout or you won't be able to be productive in strength gains in the gym, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So tracking macros for those that don't means she has to count her protein grams to get enough protein. She has to count her carbohydrate grams to get enough carbohydrate. She has to count her fat grams to get enough fat. But now up to the point before you were doing pole dancing and, and uh, probably more, especially the bodybuilding aspect, you're pretty much living the Shibboleth lifestyle, right? Yes. It's when you had to get a trainer, the bodybuilding trainer that said, okay, you're going to have to increase your calories. Yes. Yes. Now, as far as my regular day to day, so Monday through Friday looks pretty, pretty simple, like boring for me. It, I mean, it's the same thing over and over again. Like I, my alarm goes off at 4.30. I am out the door by five o'clock. I go, I run five miles every morning. Um, it takes me right about an hour, hour and 10 minutes or so. Cause I don't, I don't run super fast. That's not my goal. I'm just trying to get the miles in. Um, I finish up with my run. I come in, I have an energy bar. Part of that energy bar is me tracking my macros and then I leave it and I go to the gym and I do a weightlifting session. My weightlifting session is usually about 45 minutes. Um, I have a three, three workout rotation. I'll do a push, pull, legs kind of rotation. So um, for, for those of you who are exercise, you know, conscious or whatnot, Pushing, I mean, it, it, it's, it's the type of workout that you do. So I, I do push-pull legs twice a week. Um, Amanda, let me ask you this, though, so that they're clear, because here's what happens to a lot of the people that I've counseled over the years. Mm -hmm. They get feeling better. They go get a trainer, and the trainer gets them started with beginner-type application and tells them you need to eat more. And then before, before you know it, they've gained their weight back, and they're upset. Yeah. Yeah. When, when what you're talking about, if you weren't doing these intense sessions, you wouldn't be eating like you're eating now, right? Well, it, I, I don't think that I eat the way that I think you might think I eat right now, sir. Um, I, when I got my bodybuilding trainer, I was very intentional with her that I was like, I, I'm coming from a background of obesity. I've heard stories about people eating way more than like I, I and I told her I said I'm terrified of going back to being an obese I, I've, I've worked too hard to get this weight off I am I'm struggling with with it so she has been very um conscious of that um so that that way we've 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 gone into it slowly um I, I guess what I'm saying is I, I do understand you're not eating a surplus of calories uh, necessarily. But what I'm saying is to fuel your workout because you're intensely working out, you're afforded more carbohydrate. Correct, correct. Yeah, I, I have to have those extra carbohydrates. Otherwise, I'm going to gas out. And you may remember this, sir. I, I did a half marathon in 2019 and I ran the first nine miles and I got to the nine mile mark and I hit an absolute brick wall. And it was because I had, I had nothing left. And I had to walk the last four miles because I did not, I mean, I didn't have the energy to, to keep going. And, and it was because at that point I was doing strictly Shibboleth. I was following Shibboleth, um, the Shibboleth uh, lifestyle. I, I was not eating surplus calories or surplus carbs. And I, 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 I didn't have what I needed to in order to like do that run effectively. Yeah. So people know carbohydrate is responsible for fueling uh, your anaerobic capacity, not your aerobic capacity. Fat does that. Uh, but your anaerobic capacity, uh, you have to fuel that with carbohydrate. So we're not recommending to someone who's not going to spend 45 minutes in the gym to start upping your carb intake. Okay, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. This this has been it's it's been a long, long time coming for me. Like I I was not consistent with my work. In fact, when so I started working with my bodybuilding trainer a year ago. It, it was well almost a year and a half ago. 
And she gave me, you know, the, the recommended workouts, how much cardio you should do per day, how many weightlifting you should do. I was not consistent. I, in fact, it, it was only March of this year that I got super consistent where she told me you need to be in the gym six days a week. That was, I, or, I mean, or lifting six days a week. Um, I was still using my home gym at the time. Um, but before then I was just like, eh, I don't feel good today. I'm not going to do it. How, how do you now though, on those days that are hard, you go on and do it anyway. How do you get through those hard days? What, what gets you going where in the past you'd say it's too hard. I'm not doing it. I'm not feeling it. Now you do it even when you don't want to. What, how do you do that? Uh, it, it, people aren't going to believe me when I say this, but really I feel like poop if I don't. It, yeah. it, I mean, I, I've gotten to the point where if I let myself be lazy, I feel it for the next two days. And, and I, um, and, and so like my alarm will go off at four 30 and I may still be tired and I don't want to get out of bed, but I know I like, I've, there've been days where I've let myself stay in bed and then I, it, I've been got up on the wrong side of bed, the bed that day. And I just had a crappy, it, it ruined the rest of my day. And so, um, but a lot of the reasons why I get up and do it anyway is because you can't always be motivated. You got to be disciplined. And so I have, I feel like I've unlocked the key to being disciplined I, because I know I'm not always going to be motivated, but I'm going to be disciplined because I know that I've got goals. Yeah. And, and after you've, you've went on and done what you're supposed to do, you feel better. You have that the endorphin and dopamine release and you feel good. Yeah. Yeah. The, Sally's asking, she said, as far as the unapproved carbohydrate, the uh, the carbohydrate that you need to fuel your workout, what type of food sources are you consuming? So I do mostly rice, um, rice, oatmeal and potatoes. <laughs> Um, I, you know, this is a completely sidebar subject, but like last week I went to the doctor, I got some, I've been getting some blood work done and they currently have me gluten-free. So no bread here, <laughs> but so the, the, so the things that I am gravitating towards, like I love oatmeal, oatmeal and rice and potatoes those those are the things that really do give me the the fuel that i need they're they're good whole food carbohydrates i don't want the refined stuff um i know a lot of bodybuilders who they can get away with eating a bag of m ms that's not me i i, I because i'm coming from a background of obesity i don't want to eat a bag of m ms because that's a slippery slope and i i'd rather eat potatoes than eat m ms <laughs> Oh, yeah, definitely. And again, folks can have potatoes and oatmeal on our program. <laughs> but I'm assuming that your trainer needs a little bit of insulin in your system to promote muscle. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they're also asking, can you name some specific exercises you do in the gym that's caused you to look like you look, man? Uh, uh, honestly, a lot. Most of the stuff that I uh, like, I'll be honest, po pole dancing is what where, is, is how I got started. And it, it's, it's where a lot of this, a lot of these, my arms are. Are, are from pole. Um, but as far as translating that to the gym, push-ups, uh, dump like bicep curls, uh, tricep kickbacks, um, lap pulls down, pull downs, um, any, any upper body type exercises of that nature is, um, and doing those, I like doing those because they translate to the pole. It makes me stronger to be able to climb and do the things that I want to do. So yeah, I, I see Rebecca just um, popped in. I, I do have kettlebells that, you know, kettlebell swings and, and things like that as well. So, so you work in the upper bar upper body do you do squats do you do lunges do you do things for the lower body yes yeah so I, I do a lot of squats I do um lunges um doing a lot of leg curls um leg curls and uh, leg extensions um leg extensions that's something that I was not really able to do at home I, I had resistance bands but I was having I was struggling to try to like get the setup to where I could properly do um, leg extensions. So now that I'm in the gym and I have this equipment that I can do leg extensions, I'm like, oh man, my quads are looking good. <laughs> awesome. 
but you credit, if I'm hearing you right, you're crediting a lot of your strength gains to the pole dance and setting a good foundation for you to start body. Yes, yes. Because you're using your body weight, I would assume. Yes, a pole is all about body weight and, and just conditioning. Like I would, I, I've gotten to the point where I will do crunches on the pole. I will get on the pole. I will squeeze my legs as tight as I can to make sure I'm holding myself on there. And then I'll do crunches. Awesome. Now, Lada asked, uh, did you, when you got back to Shibola, did you start back from the beginning? Did you, what did you do when you got started back? Yeah, I, I forced myself to go back through the basics because one, because I knew that the reason that I ultimately failed the first time was because I didn't bother to properly learn the basics. You know, one of the things that you said was how I lost my tolerance in the groups for people who, you know, didn't, didn't like criticism. And um, so for me, it was real important when I got back on the program, I wanted to make sure that I fully understood. I wanted to know the combinations. I, I didn't want to have to rely on a meal list. I didn't want to have to rely on, I know that I can have green beans and chicken, and, and that's a good combination. Like, I, I love green beans and chicken, but I also want to, wanted to know the combinations like the back of my hand so that that way I could create my own recipes, my own meals using the rules of the Shibboleth combination. And um, and so I, I wanted to make sure that I understood it. And so, yes, I started back from the very basics, the very beginning. Um, I did use, you know, the, the, the meal replacement items and things like that when I first started in order to just get me out the door running. But I wanted to know the combination so that that way I could buy stuff at the grocery store and cook my own meals. Uh, and, and they're asking too, how much time during the week do you spend on pole? And then how much additional time do you spend exercising in the gym per week? So I go to pole class three to four days a week. So three to four hours a week. Um, my gym time is about 45 minutes, four, at least five days a week, sometimes six days a week. It depends on how I am on the weekends. Um, but then run and then uh, I run Monday through Friday. Um, and I also run at least one day on the weekends. I, I do give myself a rest day, but I, but I run six days a week. And then, um, one of the other things that I've gotten into, I don't do this very regularly, maybe three times a month, I'll go to a spin class, a, a bicycle spin studio class. Um, there's there's one just down the street from my house and um, my chiropractor recommended it one day. I didn't think I would like it. I went, I fell in love with it, but I ain't got time to do it, you know, multiple days of the week. So I, I try to get over there two to three times a month. Now you work full time job. Yes. And what I just heard, I did the math. You're exercising, spending time in some form of uh, intense exercise. 10 to 15 hours per week. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So that leads to this next question. What, where's the sagging skin? What did you do about the sagging skin they want? Um, well, I, I do have it. Yeah. It is there. <laughs> I mean, I could get up and show y'all if y'all wanted it, but it, I mean, it, I, I, I didn't, here's the thing. Y'all see those biggest loser shows where they lose 150 pounds in what, three months? That's where that's where you end up with the problems because you, you're losing it too fast. And you're not preserving any muscle. I have it took me two years to lose the 110, 120 pounds. And it's been and I've really kind of, as far as the number on the scale, it's pretty much stayed where it is for the last two years. I've been anywhere for. I've been as low as 164 and I'm back up to about 180. So I've been within a 15 pound range in the last two years. Now my physique has changed. My, my measurements have pretty much stayed the same. Um, but as far as the definition in my arms, the definition in my belly, the definition in my legs, all that has changed. Um, but I've, I've got, I've, I've got the, what do they call it? A mother's apron, the, the saggy fupa that, you know, the Dunlap over your belly that I mean it Dunlap. It, it, so it's there. <laughs> yeah, we, we have the Dunlap disease. <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah. And so, again, not sure if you answered this directly. I heard Cindy Mitchell's want to know, uh, when you started Shabbat, you said you walked every day. How far did you walk? I know you said you run five miles a day now, but uh, back then, uh, what kind of mileage was you getting or how many steps were you getting when you were eating Shabbat and, and doing the walk? I Well, really, I was trying to get anywhere from ten to 15,000 steps. And then there was, you know, Fitbit challenges and stuff like that. So there were weeks where I would try to do more. Like there were work week challenges where you were trying to get a hundred thousand steps in only five days. So that's, you know, 20,000 steps a day. Um, I, I, it was kind of all over the place for me, but I, I tried for a minimum of 10,000 steps a day because that, I mean, that was your recommendation all, all along on Shibboleth. And I'm like, well, I need to get at least 10,000 steps, but then you know, me being stubborn, I've tried to do more. Yeah. I, oh, you did too. You, I, I've watched you do it. So um, we've made reference a few times that you've had to move on from, from the group, not because you don't love the people, but when they ask you your advice, you're, you're pretty curt with people. Uh, for example, if, if someone says, well, if they even come out with any type of excuse, uh, you don't patronize, you, you just tell them like it is. And yeah. uh, you you got in a lot of trouble over that. So you you like you know I love them. I don't. I'm not meaning to hurt them, but you know at times you've even gotten on to me. Yeah, you you've really gotten on to me. You say you pay you patronize people too much and you're not helping them, and you'd help them a lot better if you just tell them the truth. So you feel that way. Why do you feel that? Way? Um. Well, part of that, it, it, you know, we hadn't even touched on this, but you know, part of my story is a financial journey. I'm a big Dave Ramsey fan. I don't know if we got any Dave Ramsey fans on here. Hopefully we do. do. (laughs) Yeah. Um, But I, you know, I was in a lot of debt and that's something um, that we worked through. And one of the things that he teaches is that, you know, you can't enable people. And, um, and so for me, I, I felt like, like, I think there needs to be a level of honesty with people. And um, so sometimes people, sometimes people need to be, you know, they need, they need to be loved on. I, I'm the type that I like tough love. And sometimes you need to hear the, the, the tough love, like, look, you just need to quit putting the cookie in your mouth. Yep. Yeah. I, I seen someone the other day. I can't remember it. This probably isn't a specific question, but I think you might've even showed me, but it was something like, I don't have time to watch videos or something. It was something that's similar. It's yeah. probably, but your kind of answer as opposed to mine is then stay fat. <laughs> you know? That's pretty much yeah. the man, right? Yeah. I love you, it. You've got, to, you've well, got. Say, Thank you for saying what I can. <laughs> You've got to get sick and tired of being sick and tired. And that's, that's where I was. That's, I, I was tired of being sick. I was tired of, you know, not being able to do things. Gosh, I'm, I'm actually surprised that I hadn't, you know, got to this point in this interview yet. But one of my biggest whys is because I looked at my family elders I looked at my family history and I look like I see people that I I see the lack of health that I don't want, you know, in the pole industry and in the bodybuilding industry, I see women in their 50s, 60s, 70s, still on stage, still killing it. And I'm like, I want to look like you when I'm in my 50s, 60s and 70s. I don't want to look like my family friends who are having to ride the scooters at Walmart to get their groceries because their knees hurt. And I, sorry, not sorry, if I've just offended you with that comment, I don't want to be on a scooter. Nothing wrong with that. I, I wish more people would adopt that no excuse policy. It's awesome. Lindsay, we, if, if you got time, we don't want to just monopolize you all night, uh, but Lindsay's got a question and we'll, we'll end on this one. And then I want to turn it back over to you for any parting thoughts or words or advice you have for our group. I know I didn't get to all the questions. We'd be here till midnight. Uh, All these questions are great. Uh, But Lindsay says, best advice for anyone who is just recently getting started with this life. Really, Lindsay, I just dive in dive in, like learn, learn the combos. It, it, it may be a little bit overwhelming. And I'll, I'll say this, it, it, it's a little bit overwhelming. The first, it takes about two to three months to like really learn it. 
Um, for me, when I recommitted to it, I think I kind of mentioned this, is I did rely on meal replacements like the the, the bars and, and the oatmeal cream, I can't, the Finiflex cream. I don't, honestly, I don't remember what all is approved anymore because I don't use those meal replacement items anymore. But I did back then, the Quest bars and things like that. So when I needed easy portion control, easy something that I could take with me on the road, like if I knew I wasn't going to be home and I needed something for lunch and I didn't want to go through the drive through I would take a Quest bar with me or something like that. So planning out, like if you know that you've got something going on, you know, plan and take your meals with you, your uh, emergency kit. I think that's what it's called. Survival and kit. Survival kit, sorry. <laughs> I can't even remember all the verbiage anymore. Take your survival kit with you and just learn the combinations. Because if, for me, it, it's a no brainer now that I can have chicken and green beans. Or if I want, you know, or, or if I do want some corn, you know, I know that I have to have a lean meat to have corn, but I also need a fibrous veggie. And so it's, it's one of those things where if you, if you simply learn the combinations and learn how to put the meals together, you can cook for yourself at home, or you can go to a restaurant and order something that is not going to derail you. Um, and so that, that, that's the biggest thing is, it, the, the, the Shibboleth website has so many tools. Um, the, the, there's mentors that can help you. And so um, one of the reasons why I kind of got to the point where I, I, I removed myself from the group is, is the excuses. Well, the excuses are because you're not taking the time to actually learn it. So if you take the time to learn it, it you'll be successful. Yeah. And you really can't explain that to people. For me, I'm, I'm not speaking for you. One of the things I have to, because I love helping people, one of the things, I feel called to do it, and one of the things I have to check myself all the time is the the excuses and the pity potty daily. It begins to affect me and my effort. Yeah. I don't like to be around it, and I assume that's part of your motive is, you know, you want to be, you, excuse my French again, uh, you could probably get away with saying it better than me, so I'll say it a little different. You say, look, Travis, I'm just in a place now where I want to be surrounded by bad, bad art people that don't make excuses and they're go-getters. And not everybody in our group is a go-getter, in which I come back at you and I say, do you remember when you and I started? Do you remember that? Yeah. And when, we, when we started, I don't know about you, but when I started, I was not. I was pretty mentally weak. It, so my, my thing I want to point out is where you came from and where you are now. We yeah. have an entire group of people here that are motivated yeah. by what you said tonight. Now, I hope everybody will listen to this because this is critical. We, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? We have a group of people here that they want to go from where you were to yeah. where you are now. And they have no idea what they're asking for, the type of effort that you go through now versus when you first started. It has been, because I've watched, it's been a gradual increase in intensity over a period of time. That's why we tell people, start where you are. Yeah. And you're going to feel like doing more in the future and get a good attitude. Because if you won't live the Shibboleth daily discipline on a daily basis, even when you don't feel like it, you sure as heck are not going to put in 15 hours a week exercising like Amanda does. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and, I, and you're absolutely right, sir, is that, is that it, it, I, you have to crawl before you can walk and you have to walk before you can run. And so um, while, yes, it is difficult for me to be in the group and see the crawlers because I'm, sprinting now um so it, it's I, I do want to be a resource for the people who want to run so if if, if you want to if you if you want to hang out with me if you want to uh want, want to ask me questions that's fine and good but if you come to me and you're a crawler and you give me excuses be aware i'm gonna give you some tough love yeah yeah for sure and they're wanting to know how can they follow you after this this session so the main place to follow me is on Instagram and my handle there is restoring the temple 2018 because I have been restoring this temple and I started in 2018. So that's where that name came from. Um, 
There is, I do have a Facebook page also. It's called Restoring the Temple. I ha, I'm, I'm trying to be better about um, updating it a little bit more frequently now, um, but that's where you can follow me. Um, I don't friend request me. Uh, I, I keep my friend list on lockdown like for, for close friends, but, it, but you can definitely follow me on Facebook. On, on my page or on Instagram, you'll, you'll get more access to me there. So um, Amanda, before we go tonight, do you have any parting words for the group here? Anything else you'd like to share with them before we go tonight? And this has been, thank you for spending your, your time with our group. I know it's been very meaningful to them. I know they are going to pray for you and your journey and they feel blessed by you tonight. Anything that, that you'd like to leave with them, heart to leave with them? Uh, guys, the, the biggest thing is just find your, if you're struggling to find your why, um, it, again, for me, it, it took me hitting absolutely rock bottom to where I felt like I did not have anywhere else to go but up. Like the, the adoption failure, um, it, 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 it tore me to the core. Um, and so uh, obviously I, I don't wish anybody else to ever experience that kind of trauma, that kind of heartache, that kind of loss. Um, but everybody's got something deep in them that, that can help them, you know, move forward. And so, like I said, for me, it was, uh, I, I saw my, my elders that I wanted to be like, and I saw my elders that I did not want to be like, and, um, just you you've got to dig deep and and determine okay how how worth it is it to just you know get my health in order and and keep going and stop making excuses yeah 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 all right this has been awesome i'm sure you're going to get feedback for days to come especially over there on instagram keep posting uh, i've been encouraging to encouraging you to post more yeah uh, because, you know, those algorithms, when they loosen up, uh, you're going to find a, a large group to travel with you uh, that wants to run and not yeah. crawl. Yeah. So I, hope, I hope that you develop a following out of this. Yes. Thank you, sir. All right. We appreciate y'all tonight. Thank y'all for coming. Thank you, Amanda. Amanda, you've done a great job. I don't know what you're afraid of because you you nailed it. You knocked it out of the park. And uh, we just love you all. And uh, hope that we'll continue traveling together as a Shibola family, helping one another, friends helping friends, and also getting to see tonight what a diverse group we are. Uh, even if you're, I want you to be sure, even if you're one of those that's crawling, uh, that's great. You're making progress. We'll crawl until we can walk and then we'll walk until we can run. We'll do this together. All right. Yes. All right, everybody. Good night. Thank you all for coming. Uh, don't forget the amazing Kim Danke will be here tomorrow night at 8 p.m. to share her journey. And we're looking forward to that as well. All right. Thank you all. Good night. Thank you.